Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, right, I thought I'd do a wee video because I've not done one in a while and I don't know, just felt like it was maybe due. This is week four. Um, so, you're doing excellent so far. Um, the sessions have been really tough as a, for a new person coming in, so new guys are doing excellent because I, I know you're probably thinking these are pretty demanding. You, you maybe f sometimes feel a bit overawed by some of the sessions in a way or a bit overwhelmed by them, but you just need to keep coming and just keep persevering and just keep doing what you're doing because honestly you're, you're doing really well. Um, it's 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 week four, so you're probably you're probably getting into the way of it a bit and starting to get what it's all about. Uh, this this session in particular is is a bit different because uh, one it's a bit more running focused. This session this block's a bit more focused around. Uh, game time as Ryan called it um, the weekend session the running session um, so first of all new guys a lot of you are obviously you go to the hills um, so don't feel that all the all the action's happening at the track it's not okay um, the, the, the sessions at the track and the sessions at the hills are in some ways at, at opposite ends of the spectrum at the moment um, and what I mean by that is the sessions at the track although the hills are very demanding too the sessions at the track um, are quite high volume um, but as the weeks go on, the volume of the, at the track is going to drop, so they're actually going to be doing less because the focus is more on speed, increasing speed. Whereas the guys, you guys that are going to Queen's Park, um, the opposite is true. The volume is going to increase as the weeks go on, right? Uh, so they're going to kind of bypass each other. Um, so at the moment, the track sessions are, are very grueling, um, and the Queen's Park sessions are, are will get more and more grueling as the weeks go on. Uh, so both are doing great. It's so obviously I spend most of my time at the track and Kerry and Emma do a great job doing it at the house. Um, but just because there's larger numbers at the track, don't think that the, the house sessions don't devalue them in any way because they're very tough in their own right um, and you're doing really well with them. Um, the actual sessions at the classes, as you've noticed, there's a lot more emphasis on controlled movements. When I say as, as you've noticed, more so the returners, particularly on the heavy lifting. So you may as well just know now, uh, returners, that th there is no big accumulative mass, like heavy rat, heavy one rep max focus this block. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you won't have the opportunity to try one rep max because it's kind of a tradition that you get the chance to, but it's not going to be the focus the way it was at the last block. You might have already gathered that already. We're very much concentrating on the whole concept that I mentioned at the start of speed hides a need. Um, so... That is very much the focus of the deadlift so far, You especially you need to concentrate on the lowering phase. Okay, so the lowering phase is what's called the eccentric phase, when you're lowering the weight down slowly. Uh, that's when the, the muscles are lengthening. Uh, and that's the focus that we're trying to get you to think about more because we want to try and get you to think about your hip position more uh, and, and really try and concentrate more on mind-to-muscle connection uh, because it gives you a real chance. So this is your chance. See any returners that say or think or feel that they always get back pain doing deadlifts or they're not quite comfortable with the movement, they always get pain, then this you're not going to have a better chance to master it than this block because you shouldn't be putting a lot of weight in the bar. The, as I've said, 50% one net max is basically what the, the most that we've asked you to put on so far. Possibly 60%, but the, con the focus is lowering the bar down slowly and keeping the tension on the muscles throughout the full rep count of 10 reps. For that reason, you should really, really start to become much more familiar with the movement, how it feels. Uh, this is a, this is a really good thing about this block. This is the, this is what we're focusing on. So obviously it suits beginners, uh, but it also suits folk that have been lifting for a while, that have been lifting heavy for a while. It's important that you address different aspects of training um, in order to gradually progress every element of your of your. Physicality, basically, there's no point in just lifting heavy all the time. Um, and as I said before, this isn't a powerlifting club. Right? It's not an Olympic weightlifting club. It's not a powerlifting club. It's a strength and conditioning based, athletic development type boot camp, uh, and it, that's important to consider. And that because um, if 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 just powerlifting and lifting one net maxes was the key to maximum athleticism then all the best runners and sprinters and pole vaulters and in the world would all be the strongest at lifting weights and they're not we know that they're not um, and vice versa so it's important what i'm trying to do at this block is to get you is is ready 
in a state of readiness for as many different situations as possible in a way um, by by being as healthy physically as, as possible um, so for example one of the mainstay exercises that you're going to be doing in this block is the stiff leg deadlift one legged row um, because I think it's just an excellent all round stability, core stability, hip stability and mobility exercise um, so the thing about these exercises is that they require more patience and they also require more concentration so you need to be alert when it comes to all the lifts you need to concentrate and we'll just keep telling you to slow down if you're not slowing it down you're not getting the benefit of the way the sessions are set up so bear that in mind you also need to remember that you will not lose strength just because you're not lifting heavy and the reason you won't lose strength is because you are lifting um slow eccentric movements we know that the eccentric portion of a lift elicits potentially elicits, is, is or at least is a is, is symptomatic of, of a stronger, more powerful athlete. And what I mean by that is that this, the top sort of strongest lifters in the world will have a very, will have, generally speaking, a slightly slower controlled eccentric phase on these lifts. So in other words, you're developing a strength um, even though you're not lifting as much weight, which will mean that you're not going to lose any maximal strength. I guarantee you won't. So we're trying to serve and see a bigger picture with this setup this time, okay? Um, and you just need to trust the process as usual <laughs> but don't don't get carried away don't be chasing the weights by all means if you're getting comfortable with a four second eccentric phase then put more weight in the bar um, until you find the challenge on again but this is all about controlled movements and you need to concentrate so when it comes to the four sections there's obviously there's four different sections in each, well, a lot of the time remember treat each section as an individual and what I mean by that is recognise that each of the sections are, are, are focusing on different things and because they're focusing on different things you need to concentrate on all of them you can't just um, wait for your favourite exercise uh, and then just do the, the rest of it a wee bit less, less emphatically each each section addresses different things, whether it's core stability, strength, um, mobility, um, leg strength, hamstring strength, glute strength, activation work, um, mobility work, posture work, we're, we're, we're ad single leg work, we're, address we're addressing different things each of the different sections. And it really, you have to make the most of each section, okay? Um, because the idea is we're ticking a box here, we're ticking another box here, we're ticking another box there, and we're bringing it all, you're bringing yourself forward together, uh, um, improving all these different elements of your abilities uh, and, your, and your strengths and your weaknesses. Uh, so with that comes probably more frustrations sometimes um, because it requires more concentration, it requires more awareness of your body. Um, to give you an example, I've not done core work for six months, like after that whole calendar shoot, I just scurred me, I've not done any. <laughs> so I just started doing some core work again uh, in the last week or two and I think I was expecting to have really severe DOMS in my stomach muscles. And I didn't. Uh, and what I realised was it's because I've not been doing core work, so I've become less good at engaging my core muscles, which is rather annoying. Um, so bear that in mind when it comes to these lifts. Okay, new back, new guys as well. You should be. You should, this is really relevant to you. Core work as well as the lifting should actually get harder. It should get more difficult as the sessions go on, because you're going to become better at them you're going to become more efficient at working the correct muscles so someone that doesn't feel it in the appropriate area or can do lots of reps up and down no problem doesn't mean they're doing it well it just mean, it means the opposite it means they're not feeling the movement it should be really difficult you should feel like you're shaking when you're doing a lot of these core movements for example you need to really concentrate um I remember Emma just said last week that she only feels, it's only in the very recent times that she feels she's really starting to master certain movements and she's been lifting for a few years now um, to, in order to feel the muscles, the, the, the right muscles um, and that, that's and that's the thing, it takes time, mind to muscle connection takes time and it requires a lot of concerted effort to really concentrate um, when, it's, when it comes to developing your glutes for example um, or your hamstrings or your core it will take time and concentration before, and it will take a real amount of work until you start really getting the movement. It will just click eventually and you think, oh my God, I get it now, I'm really feeling it in a way. And there's always a next level of feeling it, if that makes sense. Um, so just remember that it's not just a case of performing the movements. Um, it's not just a case of moving from A to B. It's about making the most of the movements and concentrating on the whole movement. Try to really think about the muscles you're trying to work and figuring it out for you what, how you're going to do that 
because everyone's a wee bit different in that respect. Um, so these are the things to, to just to think about. I just wanted to cover these wee sort of random thoughts in my head, to be honest. Um, and also just to say, for anyone that's sort of struggling or doubting themselves, you're doing better than you think you are. Like that's something I think is, is very easy to be hard on yourself and to dismiss what you're doing or think, ah, I'm not where I want to be yet or I'm not as strong as I used to be. Okay, that's something that maybe often happens with new mums that have just given birth uh, and, and, and they, they get really frustrated with themselves uh, because they can remember three years ago that they were really strong and stuff. You're doing better than you think and you just need to take it. For a start, you're coming to the sessions. Like you're, you're trying and that, that is it's all about effort. We're not interested in people showing off and, 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 and who the strongest is and who the fittest is and the fastest. That's not what it's about. It's about who puts in the effort. And it's the people that put in the effort. That will, will, the, the, you guys are the ones that get the rewards and you, you, you're the guys that make this so satisfying as a coach to see. We, we celebrate progress. We don't celebrate who the best is or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. When someone puts up a really impressive lift, it's great to watch and it's great to sort of acknowledge it. But that's not the be-all and end-all. It's just about individual effort and, and trying to improve you. Already, four weeks in, I can see a huge improvement in a lot of the new guys. It's really good to see, uh, uh, especially on the single leg stability work when on, on uh, week one and week two, a lot of you are like Bambi's on ice. <laughs> but you can see... And I think a lot of you are starting to realise that you're getting better at it as well. You can see there's a sort of a bit more oomph about some of your movements and a bit more like confidence in which you're approaching some of the exercises. So that's excellent. Um, so you just need to keep doing what you're doing. So I guess all, all this video was to do was to reinforce why you're here, what we're doing at this block. It's about slow controlled movements. Um, there won't be as many weights sessions as there was at the last block. Okay, so obviously this week there's been the trap the trap buzzer out and the, and the squat racks are out, but it, there won't be a session which is just all weights. It's not it's not going to mimic the last block. No block is the same anyway, as you know. Um, and there's a lot of some quite fun stuff still to come. The Swiss balls are going to become even more prevalent. Eventually you'll be doing a kind of Swiss ball complex, which is just a series of exercises that you're just going to complete and you'll be doing them for maybe eight, 10 to 14 minutes. So I just wanted to check in and say you're doing great. Okay, if you're struggling with the, the nutrition, come and talk to me. I'll probably do a separate video actually um, on on uh, like emotional eating. Um, not that I'm an expert in emotional eating, I'm not a psychologist, right? I can only give out food advice, but I've just noticed there's been a number of food diets this week from, from people saying that they are very aware that they eat um, it's a sort of response to stress and how do they combat that and they've asked for advice on that so I'll probably just do a whole video on that I'm not, as I said, I'm not a psychologist um, so there's probably people that are more qualified to, to discuss this than me but I'll certainly um, do a video of some sort of tips that I think might help uh, so yeah, that's it, that's all just to say you're four weeks in, you're doing terrific uh, and long may it continue stretch, okay, the stretch attendance last night, Monday night was awful, <laughs> right? Um, which amazes me um, because stretching is a preventative measure to stop you getting injured. Injuries don't just happen like that. Very rarely they happen like that. You might think they happen like that because suddenly you feel sore, but most injuries are a result of a cumulative, like an accumulative effect of a, a gradual t tightening of muscles or a, or a creation of an imbalance. So even if you think you've immediately got an injury, a lot of the time it's been a result of a cumulative effect. So for example, I at the moment can't run, I keep on getting cramp in my hamstring, which is a pain in the ass. Well, it's not a pain in the ass, it's a pain in the hamstring. But it's just manifested now, and I know why. It's because I've been quite neglectful of the warm my warm-ups and my cool-downs, um, and it's, it's come back to bite me. So you can't, you can, you've got to remember like, the, um, that you, there's things in place that will stop you getting niggles because the sessions are going to go only get more intense and if you get an injury in week 7 it's probably because from week 4 to week 7 you didn't stretch and suddenly it's it's just your body's been, it's just pushed over the edge you know so just one more thing to think about that was all uh, but you're doing great guys the sessions are a really good buzz of the sessions um, the running group there's a lot of guys meeting up on Tuesday and Wednesday nights to do the extra running sessions which is again ideal you're going to get much much fitter at this block um, so so far, everyone seems to be really enjoying it, which is great. So, that's all, and I'll talk to you soon. Any questions about anything, ask. See you soon.